Hello everyone and welcome to Ballet Universe with me, Elitza Zafirova. Today I am going to pay a little bit more attention and once again explain some details, very important details, about how we should be using and placing our scapulas in order to make sure that our backs are doing what they need to do while we dance or in our everyday life. So, without having to continue too much, I'm going to turn around and talk about the scapulas. The scapulas or the shoulder blades are these little angel wings that we all have right here. And the little corners of those tend to usually uh, touch the strings of our leotard or the body that we're wearing, just as I am wearing this one now. So what we want to do with these little corners is not, remember, not to drag them together and think that we are holding our back as we are actually squeezing these two together. I am very sure you can see my scapulas very well because um, they tend to, or used to kind of stick out a lot when I was little. Then, of course, I had to work a lot on to realizing up here at first that I need to work with these two, which are led by different muscles around them, in a different direction. So the direction, if we say we are into a second position, is not inwards. So it's not inwards like this, down and in. As you see, I'm really touching my one of my scapulas here uh, at the middle of my spine, at the at the middle of my back where my spine is. What we want to do is exactly the opposite thing. This is not a way to hold our back. This is just a way to make things in life and in dance much harder. So these are my scapulas put together. I don't have space to put anywhere my chest, so I have to actually work with a lot of arch and quite a lot of pain <laughs> in my back. We want to do exactly the same thing. And of course, this is going to look like this. We are having the scapulas, the shoulders and the scapulas dragged away from the ears. And at the same time, they are not moving inwards. As they are down, they're moving out. It's this much of a movement, down and out. But this little movement makes a difference. You can see now that I have quite active muscles right here, helping me actually balance out my entire upper body and to support it, to uplift it, to hold it strong above my waist area and therefore my entire upper body becomes much lighter on my legs. So one more time, we are having these little corners, these little guys pointing down while of course the elbow is nicely pointing behind you or direction backwards, not downwards, so that you have this part of your arm nicely turned into the correct direction and the palm facing the opposite wall. So as you have this placed and you have the corner down, you drag it nicely out as if you want to reach with the back of your palm the opposite wall, as if you want to lengthen your arms and the energy away from the center of your back so much that you're going to touch both walls in opposition. So we are not squeezing them together and down, we are bringing them down and placing them away from the middle of the back or from the spine. If this is the spine, this is the scapulas, we place these two apart. These two scapulas apart. And this is the principle. It's going to take a little bit of time for you to get used to it because I'm sure it's a quite new of a feeling. And the mapping in here needs to be built up because, of course, it takes time to build new neurological pathways for us as we are learning to play a, let's say, piano. It's going to take us a little bit of time. So con to control the fingers, to really go on and perform the command coming up from here, it takes a little bit more time. The same thing is as when we are actually doing a lot of work in dance and in ballet with our body. So every time you have a new command to give, it takes a little bit of time to get used to it. But as long as you give the right command, you are on the right path. 